Mass box opening is completely dead by now. I'm telling you, it's like 2020. <sighs> People are saying that 2017 Angry Rudy's feels like it's coming back. Well, I got a fresh haircut, freshly shaven this morning, back in 2018. And yeah, it, there's, there's a tone shift happening on this channel. Because the direction of everything is, is a little scary. It's a little rough. I mean, today we're going to talk about mass box opening. I'm going to talk about the side effects, talk about what I see happening. So let's get right into it. Make sure you thumbs down two times, slap yourself across the face with an old taco, and then make sure you eat it the next day. So when mass box openers, which are mostly done by stores or evil collector investor flippers, any of these components of the market, when they see a market that's like this and they're going, um, what's the newest set right now? Uh, it's still Core 21. Pretty soon it's Zendikar. What's Core 21 doing? Expected value of what? $60, $70 TCG market price? Okay. What's Zendikar? Wait, Zendikar's not even out yet. How was the expected value already $70, $80 for TCG market pricing? When you see numbers that are this low, it's going to stop the stores that absorb large amounts of standard booster boxes from pretty much selling singles, you know, injecting liquidity into the market cracking a ton of packs, putting their display cases in their store with a bunch of single cards for the local business. Oh, wait, that's right. There is no local business. That's still done. We're no good. Uh, that's right. And if you open the, if you do open during this time period, the internet attacks you. Okay, so the pretend store that's already bankrupt can't fill their display case anymore. The impact of even a hundred stores in the United States that don't do a mass box opening. Let's say each store only does 120 box mass box opening. Not even a crazy 240, 360, 480, or 600 box. A 120. If 100 stores don't crack 120 boxes and inject that liquidity at the market and, and help increase that race to the bottom for the single card prices, do some math. What would 100 stores even buy 100 boxes? 120 by 100. Yeah. I know, it is that many. It's ridiculous. And the impact of that is having side effects when it comes to Wizards allocation period, which has been getting shorter, and when it comes to the value of the cards within the box. The value of the single cards within these new products are so abysmal, it's, it's disturbing. Because you're destroying a section of the market, which is what the backbone of many LGSs would run. Why should a regular Timmy walk into uh, Timmy's Emporium's basement store, buy three packs for $10, and the employee turns around, gives them three packs to pay $10 plus tax, so almost $11. So they're paying, I don't know, what does that come out to? Let's say $350, $375 a pack maybe out the door. And the average expected value of a pack is what? $1.75, $2. So literally, even if he gets super lucky, he'll break even. But overall, maybe maybe one in a thousand packs turns a profit because it's a foil mythic variant number 17 with a Rubik's Cube. I don't know. But do you see what I'm saying? Yes, it is about the financial aspect of it. Rudy, it's a game first! Beep, boop, beep, boop, boop, boop. Yeah, I know. I know. I feel I can feel the hits. It, but it, that's fine. It is a game first. But it needs to have a financial component. Nobody wants to play a game walk out the back door, giggity, and then all of a sudden, literally realize, wow, that was a fun game tonight. I only spent 40 bucks, and I've got at least $3 worth of cards. This is amazing. No. Nobody wants that feeling. Whether you're Timmy, Debbie Downer, Negative Nancy, or Positive Penelope's older brother, Rudy, you don't want that feeling. It doesn't work. Nobody wants to end the day saying, wow, that was a great game of Magic. It cost me 40 bucks. The cards are worthless, but... I'll go back and do another draft for another forty dollars or something. It doesn't work that way. You need to have the entire ecosystem functioning properly. And with the removal, the death of mass box open, what do you guys want to call it? With with these this component of the economy of magic being just severed, it's going to have a tremendous impact long term. Now there's a positive to this. Standard boxes are not going to be held, collected, hoarded, invested, and sealed nearly as much as they were years ago. Okay. On top of that, with a substantially reduced amount of boxes being opened, 
That's interesting. What does that mean long term? Okay, well, if the supply is not getting absorbed and the market's not moving as much product, Wizards is probably not going to order maybe an additional third or fourth print run, probably by month 10 to month 12. You could have a reduction on the last reprint order because it's a print based on evaluation or print to demand. You know, so what happens is, okay, set does good. Three months later, how's the warehouse? Uh, less than 20 pallets. All right, order another one from Carter Monday. Let's get one going for a couple months from now. All right, here we are, nine months from release. How are we doing? Still got 20 pallets. I mean, they're barely selling. Uh, all right, it's getting about a year old. Uh, end of the standard life cycle. Uh, all right, got, yeah, let's not order another one. Let's go ahead and focus on Let's go ahead and let that one be. Let's just let it run out. So we're not going to tell anyone it's out of, we're going we're gonna to cut off print run now. We'll tell people in three, four months when it runs low. That's how it works. You see what I'm saying? That is going to have substantial long-term difference in everything. And I'm telling you, with the inability of people everywhere to do these kinds of openings, you have, it's a spider web. When the spider web, any form of these links, or for you crypto bugs out there, it, it's, it's like a chain, it's like a blockchain. Everything's connected. You cannot sever a link in the economy of the way these products work. It's not that simple. Rudy Magic's just a game. Okay, well, I just look homeless because I don't get haircuts. It's the same concept. You need to have the good with the bad, the yin, the yang, the balance. You need all components of the players in this cardboard world to have a healthy functioning ecosystem long term. I don't see that anymore. This is like 2017 all over again when stores were just collapsing left and right every week. Emails, Rudy, our store is going under. Do you want to buy inventory? Well, we lost another account here. Distributor says, well, Rudy, we got an extra product. This store is bankrupt. They didn't pay their bill. Rudy, it reminds me of the Iconic Masters, Masters 25, fiend set you've been waiting for. It reminds me of that. It's all right. We got Amon Ket coming with Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Well, that didn't help at all. All right, Hour of Devastate Your Wallet. Oh, wait, that sucked down more stores. Ixalan is coming. We removed the, the lottery cards to make you happy. They're, wait, they're not, they're not selling. Um, we'll cut rivals off early. They're, they're not selling. That's what is, and by the way, you want to know something funny? What happened in 2017 when this exact same thing happened? Crypto went up. The new stuff went to crap. All the money went to reserve list. Man, it's like deja vu. Should I even make more content or should I just re-upload the old videos? That's what's happening. And it's like, you know, and I if you try to talk to people online about it, oh, good, cards should be worth five cents a piece. That mythic, 15 cents at the most. Just cardboard with chemicals. Can't eat the cards. Maybe we'll have edible cards one day. Signed edible cards. Yeah, I, you know, you know, when jokes aside, sarcasm aside, everyone, it, it's incredibly important that the balance of this stuff is a lot more complex than the average, maybe young magic player wants to acknowledge or they fully understand. The amount of money that moves and chains hand, changes hands between distributors, stores, players, collectors, investors, and as it flows through all these entities, it's a substantial amount of money. It is, it is millions upon millions of dollars on every set release. Honestly, I'd be willing to say, I mean, oh my goodness. I'd be willing to say just with like a Zendikar set coming up, we're probably talking about like $50 million moving around between all the products. So, you know, you can't really be short-sighted and emotional about this stuff. But when I see the facts, which are, you know, don't blame me, call some stores around. Well, the ones that are still in business. You know, talk to stores. Look around online. Talk to store owners in the past that you know had a ton of singles in their display case. Talk to store owners who were doing mass box openings. 120, 240, 480 boxes. It's just not happening. The value of the new cards are so many variants and flashy things. The financial value is getting nuked. And it's very concerning. Okay? I got another video coming up here pretty soon. Or you guys have already seen it. Talking about the expected value of the new standard sets. And talking about the sales of the new standard sets. And I mean, I don't know if I'm being overly negative, like 2017, because I'm just having some 
post-traumatic flashbacks here from 2017 and the crap that happened, the anger, the negativity, the stores, and just, I don't know. But what I see happening right now is very concerning. I don't like what I see because I don't see how this is positive. Besides the regular young player who's new to Magic that just says, This is great, Rudy! All the cards are cheap! I can build every, I can buy every card I want for 25 to 50 cents. I like that. The more variance, the more flashy, the cheaper everything gets. Until your cycle's out of standard, you want to buy some new cards, you try to sell your old cards, and you realize you spent $1,000 on all these packs and all these cards and building these decks, and that $1,000 is worth 20 bucks. And you're going... Holy crap, I just lost $1,000. I can't even afford standard. I mean, there should be an alpha investment cert that says, you know, literally reserveless because I can't afford standard, you know? It's one of those things that just, I, I get it, but you gotta, you, you, you got to look at a grander thought process. you got to have more of critical thinking and more in-depth about these type of topics because these type of topics are not simple. On the surface, it may seem like the reserveless is a lie. The more you dig, you realize things are very complicated, and Magic's very successful where it is today because of decisions that were made in the past. And, you know, going to a direction of creating special lists, reprinting old cards in original forms, and, you know, which not only decrease value of collectors or evil investors, but also the stores who have inventory. And for everybody who, I believe, used to have this attitude, we're supposed to save the LGS. I don't know if that's still a thing anymore or the community, or all these, you know, hot topic keywords, you know, it's one of those things where you're going to do a lot of damage to a lot of stores if you just annihilate prices, even of older modern cards, which I don't believe should be annihilated. I don't believe they should be reprinted 25 times to the ground and go to nothing. You know, it is called a collectible card game, but in 2020, obviously, that's also a very taboo word. You know, having financial value and collectible, any form of business is becoming a very negative term by itself. And that's very concerning because um, the data is reflecting it. The sales of the new Core 21 sets and the sales of the expected, the single card sales are reflecting that. So only time will tell us where we lead. I'm going to just kind of cut this video off here. We'll do another discussion here pretty soon about the actual sales of standard boxes, but it is what it is. Um, and again, this could all just be wallet fatigue, side effects of the quantity of products. We're not really sure because we have no data of going through a, a time period like this. But it, it's there's a definitely a higher level of risk than I have seen in a very long time. So we're going to cut the video off there today. Hope you guys learned something.